Uh, one of our favorite guys that we have talked to through the years, uh, through his Hall of Fame playing He's career. Six four, six five. Isn't he, he is a yeah. It, it, like now with it, the hair. With the hair, he's six eight. Six eight. What was the what was the kid in play? Who was uh what was the uh, movie? Yeah, and kid. The, yeah, and he had the big flat top. That's what Erlacher looks like now, and the restorer hair uh, billboards with the the high hair. And we, we there was a good <laughs> there was the high hair. There was the good um, Kyle Long story recently too about this. Do we have that to play for Brian um, from oh, the yeah. from the Jay Cutler story? How he got upstaged. But Brian Erlacher, the Hall of Famer, and we were in Canton when he was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. It was a great weekend. It was fun. And he always makes time for us. Uh, Brian Erlacher, good old number 54, joins us right now on ESPN 1000. Brian, how you feeling? Doing good. How about you all? Yes, I'm sorry you have a good time with my hair right now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having a good time with your hair right now? I am enjoying it still, yes. It's uh, it's working. Yes? It's not the kid and play hair. It's a little bit like my son may have the kid and play hair but i do not have oh, the kid and play hair yet. how tall are you officially with the hair oh oh i don't know i'm six four without it i know that much you okay. maybe six four and seven eighths with it i don't know okay. All right. <laughs> I, I gotta play you this this was kyle long recently on pardon my take with uh, our guy barstool big cat and he was oh, talking good. about how he would always have to fill in for cuddy like cuddy when, when cuddy was doing the show with us and then uh, it'd be something bad that would happen. Yeah, that he would all of a sudden there was a doctor's appointment for his kids that popped up. Just so happened. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then it was after you retired. But then when you started doing the show with us, you know, so we, we we ditched that and you started doing the show. Kyle Long talks about then how he would would be upstaged constantly, and your name came up. I don't know if you've ever heard this or not. Let me play this for you. I have you. Take, not heard it. No, take, I have not. Take a listen. I mean, we're joking about how uh, every podcast has a QB on every week now. Yeah. And I was saying that that Jay always did it the right way because he did Waddle and Sylvie. And then as soon as the Bears season took a turn, he'd just be like, hey, uh, Kyle, why don't you go fill in for me for the rest of the season? I was uh, the first one. Uh, the, it's funny that you mentioned this. Because you'd have to go after the worst The losses. first Jay Cutler show on a Monday evening in Wheeling yep. was uh, – you know, I'm sitting in front of the, the Jay Cutler show banner and I'm talking to these guys and the the special guest that they had a big surprise for was Brian Erlacher. So I got upstaged by the banner and the Hall of Famer. And then he took off his hat and he had a full head of hair. <laughs> yep. It was like Everything. my day kept compounding. It was getting worse. <laughs> like we lost. Jay didn't show up. Erlacher did. He took his <laughs> hat off. He wasn't bald anymore. <laughs> You, dude, you were a trooper though, because it was like literally after every bad loss, you just turn on the radio and it'd be like, "All right, welcome to the Jay Cutler Show on Waddle and Sylvie. We, we, we got Kyle Long in today. <laughs> just like, so Kyle, uh, when you guys, you know, lost by twenty twenty eight this weekend, how'd that feel? You just sit there and take it. Like I missed seven blocks. I counted them. <laughs> oh, they were so all my fault. You remember oh, that show gosh. when you unveiled the new hair? Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, that was a, that was a crazy couple of days. <laughs> you remember that I asked you, I don't know if that was appropriate or not. I said, can I touch it? And you said, go ahead. And I actually was pulling <laughs> on your hair. And I would. It was, yeah, it's, it was okay. It's, you know, it's actually connected to my head. So it's not a, it's not going to go anywhere. No, it depends how hard you pull, I guess, Waddle. That was one of the most fun days yeah, we've ever had. Yeah, that is, great. That was great. That was fun. That was one of your funnest days. You yeah, guys, absolutely. You guys must, getting, you know, an opportunity, there, <laughs> we, we, getting an opportunity to pull on your new hair. Yeah. That was, it was oh, awesome. Okay. I, guess, I guess that's fun then. It was like, forget about that day in Canton yeah. when you got in Oh, that was fun too. We're like, do you remember that day when you showed up with your new hair? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that was my favorite day ever <laughs> for you guys. I hey. felt like I was ordering at Starbucks just then. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. Give me a, a vente latte, whatever it's called. One of my listen, wife orders listen. like that. I'm sitting in line and she's springing an order out. I'm like, how do they know what that is? It's crazy to me. Listen, this is we, we, the, it's the little victories in life that we savor so much. This is what our lives have become. This is what we consider uh, to be great moments. Same here, man. I'm not far behind you. All right. Uh, so I, I heard, I think you were on a, another show. You did not like the Roquan Smith trade. Well, just the best player on their team. I mean, is he not the best player, or was he not the best player? Who's who's better than him on that team? He's, he's the best yes. player on their yes. team. It's not even close. He's the best player on that team. It's 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 crazy. I didn't I didn't like it. No, I think he was. 
um, a really good football player. I was, I was shocked. I can't say I was shocked. I just don't, I don't understand the timing. I don't understand. This, this is one of the things that makes me mad about the Bears is you draft a guy in the first round and he actually performs. You get a first round pick and you hit on it. You know, he does well. He's this, he's that. He makes, you know, he's the leader of your defense and your team and you trade him. Instead of paying him, you trade him. I just don't, I mean, of course you got more picks, but who the hell knows what you're going to do with those picks? Doesn't mean you're going to hit on those picks. It just, same way with Kyle Fuller. They, they didn't pay Kyle. They got rid of him. He was a first round pick and he played well. They didn't want to pay him. It's just frustrating to me that keeps, this cycle keeps happening over and over. Can you believe that in this day and age, the top middle linebackers in the league, off ball linebackers, like two or three or however many of them are, are making in excess of $20 million a year? It's crazy. It's, I mean, that's the way the game, the money is now. It's just, you know, it's the way it goes. You saw it, you kind of saw it coming there early on in the like, mid 2015s. You saw the money going that direction, but they're good football players, you know? They, I mean, it, it bounces out with every other position. So they, I, they make double the money that running backs make. Right. Are you surprised? That right? are running you, backs don't make anything anymore. Yeah, are you surprised that running backs, the value for running backs has kind of diminished the way that it has? Yeah, I am. You know, I, I am, but I'm not at the same time because there's so many good running backs, you know, that you, you see these guys, somebody, the big name will get hurt, somebody will come in you don't know about, and they do almost the same thing. You know, it's just, um, I'm not going to say they're a diamond dozen because a dozen because they're not, but there are, I mean, some pretty good backup running backs out, out there. You look at Pollard there in Dallas. He, he's a stud. Yeah. Uh, you obviously, you're a Hall of Famer. You played the position uh, in the middle at a Hall of Fame level. How dependent were you, Brian, on the guys in front of you not to oh. be pushed into your lap consistently? It's a, I mean, as long as they were in their gaps, honestly, you know, you, and, and the scheme they're playing, you're talking about the Bears defense right now because yeah. they play the same scheme as us. Yeah. Um, you know, it's nice when you're able to just have the gaps defined right away, <laughs> you know, when your guys are in their gaps. And even when we weren't good, we knew our guys were still in our gaps. You know, we, we understand that. And we ran to the football. But it is nice when you can have a little bit of protection from those guys up front, especially for the Will. You know, he's the guy that's supposed to run around that defense and make all the tackles. Um, but, you know, there are going to be times when you get guys in your lap. That's just the way, especially if you run cover two because you're a man short in the box and they have an extra guy to block. So you may have somebody in your, in your lap they got the upper block and make him play. Right. See, and he does, it's not apples to apples because he's not playing your position. No, um, he's not, no. Right, and I, I, I know that um, he flashed in the Monday night game against New England, but against the Cowboys, um, he did not have a good game. And, like, I was just watching that game saying uh, he is their best player, and I, I want more Roquan Smiths, not less. But I, I, yeah. I, I just – when I would watch you and Lance, and then I watch Roquan, to me, there's a, a he is not. There's a, a significant he, he, difference. He's just not on the same level as you and Lance, and so well, I, I the could, game is different now. But the game's different now too, Sylvie. You know, it, it's changed so much since since I retired. Also, I mean, I had I had bad games too. You know, if you're going to compare him on his bad games, let's compare him on his good games too. Because when he's good, he's really good. Right, I mean, I don't, and I, I, can't, I haven't watched them play that much because I don't see a lot of their games. But when that dude's good, I'm assuming he's one of the top two or three guys in the NFL. And just like anyone, when they're bad, they're not going to be. They're, they're going to be bad. You know, it's just the way it goes. And a lot of things factor into that. You know, who they're playing against, how the the whole team plays. It's just I know they had a tough week because they, they traded Robert as well, Quinn, the defensive end last week as well. Correct? Yes. Yeah, they so traded him just, to Philly. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on right now um, internally with that with that organization. I would think. When you watch the games on Sunday, uh, w whenever you get a chance to see them, who are the guys that played your position in a manner in which you're like, wow, that guy is a really difference maker. He's a great player. Well, there's not he doesn't play my position, but Micah Parsons could play anywhere on the football mm -hmm. field yep. and be good. He could play running back. He could play receiver. <laughs> he could play defensive end. He could play middle <laughs> linebacker. He could play free safety. He could play corner. That yeah, dude is true. phenomenal to me. And you know what I love about him? He's a great athlete and everything. He runs to the football every single play. Yeah. Like, if, you, if you're raising a kid, like, when we watch football, I'm like, hey, watch number 11 for the Cowboys. Watch him run to the football. That dude is, is I mean, he can, he doesn't have to run to the football because he's, you know, he's this, he's that, but he does. He doesn't take plays off, and that's what I appreciate about about him. He just, he gets to the football. Um, he's awesome. Uh, now, no linebacker, sorry, I, I got derailed. Up no, like I that, think but, we um, all feel the same way I, about I Michael good. Parsons. Yeah. I think great. it's good teaching tape, like yeah. you said, for, for yeah, kids. I mean, the, you, the there was a play against Detroit a couple of weeks ago where they had a screen and they ran down. The guy was going to score if Micah doesn't run him down, knocks him out on the half yard line. Next play, Detroit bumbles. Dallas gets the ball and they go. You know the game's over after that. But it just it just never. You try and tell your kids you never know what's going to happen on the next play. So run to the football.
You don't know. Yeah. True. When, when you've watched Brady, um, is he done? And are you sad watching Tom Brady play this year? Um, I haven't seen him play a lot. You know, I don't, I don't still don't watch a ton of NFL. Um, it, it's just different. You know, it's so weird watching their team play because, well, Tom's numbers are still good. You know, the, the wins aren't there, but you look at his numbers, the yards are there. I know they're behind a lot, so you have a lot of yards, but um, it's just different, right? They don't look like they have that intensity. It's not just him. It's the whole team. Even their defense isn't playing at the level that you expect them to play at. And they have a ton of great players in their defense. It's just, it's just a different vibe with them. I'm not sure why. I know it's not their head coach. That dude is awesome. Todd Bowles is the man. But I know it doesn't come from him. It's just something going on that uh, they can't put their finger on. So, so you don't rush. But let me add, but, but yeah. I'm, I'm sad to see him. No, I'm not sad to see him play back. He's played well long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sad to see him take a turn. <laughs> like, it's just like, hey, hey, you all, you you went through it. So you know there's always an end. and and It's going to happen, yes. And so you're not in a rush to go watch these games like we are as fans. Like you're just spending time with your family, so you don't care if you miss some of these games. Yeah, I don't plan my schedule around the football games. No, like um, somebody was playing. Somebody was playing Thursday night. I think it was the Bears, and I, one of my shows was on, so I had to miss. I didn't watch the game because I was watching my show. What you show? It coincided. <laughs> uh, you don't want to know the name of the show. You, you guys, it, it's uh, not like F Boy Island or something like that, is it? No, it was actually a, a, it's, it's actually Tucker Carlson. He comes on at the same time as the oh, game. So geez. Tucker's my guy. Yeah, she, I knew you wouldn't like that. See, so <laughs> I can't miss Tucker to watch a stupid football game. So, um, so do you, uh, do you tape up, the game at least and then watch it afterwards? I don't know how. No, okay. and I'm not going to go back and watch a football game unless my son. You don't know how to daughter. use your DVR. Yeah, I know how to use it, but I don't care to for a stupid football game <laughs> that I'm not playing in. I have no, you know, doesn't really matter to me. All right, so do you feel any differently about watching the Packers struggle and maybe the end of the Aaron Rodgers era up there? God, that's sad to watch too, isn't it? I mean, you watch, I watched them. I did watch them because I love the Bills. Uh, Josh Allen's a beast. Yeah. But I watched that game, was it Sunday or Monday night? Um, yeah, that, that was um, kind of fun to watch, man. You never see the Packers struggle like that. So this year's been kind of satisfying in that aspect, watching them not be able to score at all. I Great. love it. I, I, I'm, yeah. well, Sylvie, I, I'm, Sylvie's already, they're done. <laughs> Sylvie's already you think planted that'll carry over to the bears game. When they play the bears, though, do you think that'll definitely happen against the bears and won't be able to score? No, I definitely I, right. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think like that will be his, his tonic. Like all of a sudden <laughs> he'll take the medicine and he'll all of a sudden swing it for 31 points. Yeah, it's so weird how that happens against us. I don't get it. How, he's good. He's still good. I was going to say, what, what, what do you think of, of, of Aaron? Like, he's got a polarizing personality maybe inside his building. Like, do you think that he's the type of guy that the teammates kind of rally around? Or do you think he's a guy that maybe separates guys? You know, I think that there's a lot more to it than the media sees and that they let lead on. I think, obviously, he's a great teammate because – Everyone I've talked to who's played with him loves mm -hmm. the guy. You know, when I see him in Tahoe, all everyone in a, 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 amongst the players, he's right. very well liked. I'll say that he's not a jerk. He's not arrogant. He's uh, he's very <laughs> witty and a smart ass, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. But I think in that locker room, he's very well respected. And I think that the media puts off a lot of stuff that really isn't going on. You know, they always want to try and divide, do this and do that. But I think that's just them trying to make something out of nothing. Um. When, you know, when I covered you, you always talked about um, if you were to get a head injury, you would always say you would want to grab your knee or your ankle because it was your, yeah, your life. Shoulder, so, it, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So like this came up, obviously, with Tua, who the Bears are playing this week. Does 40 year old like I don't I, I don't even know how old you are now. How old are you right now, by the way? 44. Hey, that, two of those injuries were scary. Both of those were that, that was. Um, I don't know how the hell he got back in the game that first time. How do you put a guy back in yeah. after he falls over? That's what I'm saying. So does 44-year-old Brian Erlacher get mad at 24-year-old Brian Erlacher for having that thought process? No, I do not. Because, man, I wanted to be on the football field. I just like Tua does, just like pretty much any guy who plays the game. They want to be on the field. And, I mean, and it was, well, I guess it was different when I played, too, because we didn't have all these rules yeah. for, you know, concussions. I, I got knocked out one play. I was back in two plays later. And it was different back then. <laughs> I, was, I was asleep before I hit the ground versus Denver in 03. Uh, but I'll say this. My son got um, 
we thought he made a concussion was a, a month ago, and he started getting kind of light sensitive sensitivity later in the week. We held him out of the next game. We're, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to risk it with my with yeah. my guy. Uh, he was pissed. But you know what? Uh, he got over it. He came back and played the next week and played well. But yeah, I just um, uh, it's it's different when I play, but and also when it's your kids, it's a lot different too. Well, on that note too, um, you know they're trying to protect quarterbacks, and they're trying to make sure that you're yeah. not going to be watching backup quarterbacks play. But has the league gone way too far with regard to protecting quarterbacks? This this drives me crazy. I don't know how you can get a roughing the passer on a sack. <laughs> Explain that to me. How do you sack the quarterback and get a rush in the passer? That to me, that they called it back-to-back weeks, and they were both huge penalties. There was the Tampa Bay game, and there was another one that was absolutely terrible. I don't even know what game. I think it was, it was Kansas City, right? Was it? Was it Kansas City? It might, I don't know. I mean, Kansas City probably won anyway. But uh, I just don't understand how you can get a sack and get a rush in the passer. How the hell does that make sense? To, I mean, unless you just, you know. De- Run in there and knock his helmet off or something. Yeah. But I, um, it's so hard to watch that stuff happen. And the NFL has to do something. Why can't they review those? Like they review everything. Yeah. Why not review that? Well, they do it in college, right? Sure. Which I think it's yeah. you know the, yeah. the targeting call. I can't stand those damn penalties either. It drives yeah. me crazy. Yeah. You should but be. They get it, but they get it right though. You know, at least they review it, get it right. I don't like the the outcome most of the time because I don't think the kids should have to be ejected from the game. But I, they do get it right, whether it's targeting or not. Yeah. You should be excited, though, about the player they got back from the Ravens in the Roquan deal. Who's uh, the Bears? Yeah. Who'd they get back? They got a draft pick. He's nuts! Oh, <laughs> uh, you didn't get me. You, 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 you were a little leery. I think no, I was, I was ready. Like, well, she was trying so hard, Brian. She was all, trying hey, so hard. You, you got to start up better than that, by the way. You got to be like, hey, did he ever get a hold of you? <laughs> You can't be like, uh, that was terrible, but you almost had me. Dude, uh, I freaking got me at the golf course today. Really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, he crushed me. We were trying to get Sylvie's sons. They're eight and six. <laughs> I was trying I, to get I, him to get Halloween. to get the Halloween people out with I a D's it. Nuts trek. Start them early. Yeah, yeah, you got to get that game early so they, they're weary of it when they get to high school stuff. <laughs> Ryan, you're, you're the best. Thank you. Thanks, we buddy. Be it. well. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah. There's Brian Erlacher, the Hall of Famer. Oh, he's good. Did I, do it? Did I not do it right? Did I not play the game I right? I don't think you got him, but but again, I, I don't think he, was, he got you last time either. I thought he was walking into it and then he stopped short, and I still unleashed it anyway. Yeah. No, listen, I think yours resonated almost as much as – because if you listen to when he got you, I don't think he – I think he was following his rules either, was he? It's just know. funny to scream <laughs> D's nuts and then giggle like a 10-year-old. Like, I, that's what makes me excited.